Hi students, welcome to our physics class. Our chapter name is Motion and Measurement of Distance. This is one of the very simple chapter and in the last class we discussed about length. Length and its SI unit. What's the SI unit of length? The SI unit of length is nothing but the meter. Meter. We already discussed all the topics and also studied about what is centimeter, what is millimeter and also studied about how to convert this meter to centimeter, meter to millimeter, this millimeter to meter like all the things we discussed in our last class and also discussed about the kilometer. These are some of the units that we are using for measuring length in our daily life. And also other type of measurements are there for the length and also we discussed about the measurements we are using in our ancient times and all. Some of the simple things. Now we are going to continue this topic about the measurement of length. And the topic name is correct measurement of length. Correct measurement of correct measurement of length. That means for getting the proper length we want to take care of something that we are going to discuss in this region. We have different types of length measuring devices. For example, meter scale. The another one is measurement tab. Meter road. Etc. These are some of the devices we are using to measure the length. That means the meter scale. Meter scale means normally we have the scale, the centimeter is about 15 centimeter that you are using in your box for drawing lines and all. In the similar way we are also using some other devices like the measurement tab. This is using to measure the length of the cloth by the tailors and all. And this mesh meter rod is something we are using to measure the length of the floor and all. So these are some of the things. And actually we are selecting the particular device by considering the particular situation. That means for example, here I have a beaker and my aim is to measure the circumference of this beaker. Circumference of this beaker. And is it possible to measure the length using this scale? Is it this one proper method of measuring the length of this or the circumference of this beaker using this scale? No. Maybe you can say that you are just putting this and taking the measurement but it is not accurate. There will definitely occur some error. So in such cases we want to select the device by wisely. That means here for this purpose I am just taking one. Measurement tab. That is this. And that means I am just taking the one side of this tab and just putting at this and just rounding this. And now it is very easy to take the circumference of this beaker using this. So I think you get the idea that we want to select the proper device to measure the length of the substances. That depends upon the type of the substance, size of the substance like that. For measuring small length and all we are using small scale. Small scale means our 15 centimeter scale and if our length is very large we are using the meter scale. And one thing is the this Centimeter scale is actually a small portion of this meter scale. Nothing is there. So, that things that mentioned in your textbook. So, you just want to read. The next topic is this. Some sort of care must be. 
we take while measuring the length. That means, carrier that we must have to give while taking the measurement that we are going to discuss in this area. That means, here, one block is there. My aim is to find the length of this, to measure the length of this. And here I have one scale and is it okay to take the length by putting the scale like this? No, not at all okay. We want to put the scale straight. We want to put our scale straight to the object. First point, we want to put the scale straight. Straight. The next thing, is it okay I just put this and take the measurement as 28 centimeter? Is it a proper method? No, not at all a proper method. How we want to measure this? We want to measure the length by taking the scales zero at this point. We just want to put the zero at the initial point. Or oh, this first point we want to put the zero. So, we can write start the measurement start the measurement from zero start the measurement from zero so when we are starting the measurement from zero then you can proceed it and where you can see it is of uh, around 17 centimeter so that is the length of this cube this block and in some cases you can see that the side of the scale got broke. In such cases, is it okay to put this like... No. For example, here I have one scale. And it is having the measurement 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. And here one side of this is got broke like this and now how we can use this in my hand i only have this scale and this is necessary to take the measurement of this block then what i will do the thing is very simple i just take this scale consider this is the broken scale and then and now i am considering this one as my initial point i am considering this one as my initial point and then take the measurement now I get the measurement as 80. And where I started my measurement, I started my measurement 1. So to get the proper length, I want to minus 18 minus 1 is equal to 17 centimeter. At first, what was the measurement? It is 17 centimeter. Now, if my scale is broke like this and it is having no 1 also there. Now what I will do? I will do that. I am going to start my measurement from the 2. I start my measurement from 2 and where it is? Now it is 19. That is 19 is the final point I can see here. And also we started the measurement at 2. So we want to subtract this and finally we get it as again 17 centimeter. That means the length is same. But here we are taking it. If it is 2, then our final result also will change and so we want to subtract it. Very simple concept. So that is just mentioned in your textbook. This also we want to consider when we are taking the length. So that is the thing. And the third point is this. We want to take the measurement at correct position of I. Correct. Position of I. That means you all have measurement scale now. So just put that scale in your hand and put that straight to your I. And then you just want to measure the length of any type of substance. And I'm just saying that you want to try that. That means here I'm just taking this measurement and it is around 70. And when I am looking straight to this, I get that 
it is 70. I will show you what I am telling. For example, we are measuring the length of a particular object. If it is the same block, it's okay. And here I am just putting the scale here. And the measurement starts here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, suppose this is the length. And now the point I am saying that 6, 7 like that. So, when a person is looking straight to this measurement, that means, a person is standing at this point and taking the measurement. He gets the value as 5. He gets the value as 5 centimeter. And another person is here standing at this point and taking the same measurement. And now you can see that he is looking from this point. This person is directly looking to this point and so he gets 5 centimeter. And another person standing at this point and trying to take the length from this. So he just feel that this length is around 5.3 cm. This all are assumption values that will differ. And another person is the standing at this point and he is again measuring the same length. And here standing at this point and he looking here but he feels that it is around 4.7 cm. That means 3% at different position taking the same length of this block using the same scale. But what is the difference? The I position is different. This person is some far and this person is also far and this person is such correct position. So A, B and C. So the B is right. That means for the measurement we want to put the thing at the straight to our eyes. Don't put the scale somewhere and when we look like this, we get some another value. So, that is the third point. We want to put our eyes in the correct position. That means we want to look in the correct position for taking the measurement. That depends upon our eyes position. That is the thing. And you can see that is explained in your textbook using the need diagram. Please observe that. Very simple concepts. So, this is all about this. Now, we are moving to the next topic. In this region, you just want to study these three points that how we want to take the measurement with care. That is the only thing. You just want to study these three points. Next topic is how to measure the length of a curved line. That is, this curved line is nothing this is one curved line. How we can measure the length of this curved line? Is it possible to measure the length using this scale? It is very difficult to. Actually we can say it is impossible to take the measurement of this directly using this scale. We get some value but it is not accurate or proper value. So you may say that we can use tap and take the value. It's okay, but in such cases we are using some particular method. And that is, in my hand I have one thread. And the method is very simple. Just take one thread and put a knot. Put a knot. That means here I just give one knot. And then put that knot at the first point of this line. Then adjust this thread on this curved line like this. That means I am just putting the thread on this curved line and I am measuring the length. Now my procedure is over. That means I just put this thread from this initial position to final position using this thread. Now you can see this is the length. And now how we will get the length? Very simple. Just take the meter scale and put the knot at the zero and then take the length. Here my scale is small. When I have one meter scale then I will get the proper length. For example, 
if it is one meter scale, I just put the thread like this and mark the point here. And this is the length. This is the from this point to this point. That is what the length of this curved line. It is actually around. Centimeter. My scale is only 30 centimeter. That's why it's impossible to take it using the small scale. And if I have a long scale, it is possible to take the length. So, the length of this curved line is 52 centimeter. And so, now you just want to do that. Just pause the video, take your notebook and draw some sort of curved line. And take one thread and measure the length using the same procedure. Very simple. We are just taking one thread, giving a node and putting on the curved line and then taking the length using the thread and finally we are just taking or putting that thread on the scale and noting the measurement. If you are taking small, if you are drawing small line then it will be easy to take the length. So this is the method to measure the length of the curved line. I hope it's clear for you. Very simple. So that's all about this topic. Now we are moving to the next topic. That is, this is actually the final topic in this chapter. Moving things. Moving things around us. Moving things around us. That means around us number of objects are there and they are moving. Some are moving, some are not. So now I am giving you one activity. You want to do that. Very simple. You just observe your surroundings and write some of the objects. The objects are either in motion or not. So for example... Moving car. Running train. Book. Placed on a table. Pencil. Or rotating fan. Like different types of Objects that you can observe in your surroundings. So now you just want to pause the video and write number of objects that you can see in your surroundings. If it is living or non-living, no problem. That means moving the moving ant. Moving ant. So this is also one example. In the similar way, that means the walking cow. Like any type of examples you can write. Either in motion or maybe not moving. Such objects you can write that means the stop the car. Like all the examples you can write. So now pause the video and write number of objects. That means around 15 objects you please write. And then come back. I hope. Now you completed your work and now you just want to do another work that you want to classify this into two. That is, it is also very simple. Objects at rest. Object at rest and object in motion. What is this object at rest means? Which is not moving is what object at rest. And object at motion means objects moving. So now pause the video and classify your contents to be into table. That means you already wrote 15 items now. Just classify them into this two table. That is your next work. I hope you completed your work. Here you can see one table and this is my collective data. Here I classified the objects into two. That is the object at rest and the object in motion. And what is this rest? 
plus means which is not in motion and here the examples are the this book on table bus which is a dress stone bat house etc and you have the collection of data that you wrote already and the objects in motion is moving car flying bird running and rotating fan all these are within the object in motion now my question is this how you classified this one is rest and one is motion that's okay but not that my question how you identified this is in rest and this is at motion by considering its position by considering its position that is for this at the initial state o we are considering at a particular time it is at a particular point and after some time this object is at the same position and so we are saying it at rest and what about this this is changing in position with time that is change position with time for the motion the object changes position with time by considering the time that means by the time he is moving the position is getting changed and what about this rest it is not having any change in its position no change with position actually we did the activity by considering this that means the object which have no change in its position is at rest and the object have the change in position with time is in motion now we are going to do to define the term motion very simple thing that is the question is this what is motion what is this motion how we can define this motion it is the change in position of an object with time it is the change in position of an object with time is what motion we can say when object is in motion when its position get change with time that is what the definition of motion very simple definition it is the change in position of an object with time is what motion now my question is this do all type of motion in similar manner same motion for example here we have two track one is the straight track and the another is in circular track and suppose this is one car and this car is moving through this track and here the car is here and moving through this circular track do both of the motion are same both of the motions are not same and for each type it is having one particular name now we are going to study that what are the different types of motion there are different types of motions are there within your level we are only discussing three types of motion the first one is this the example that car is moving through a straight track now that we are going to study the first one that is the recti linear motion recti linear motion that means the motion which is there in the straight path that is what recti linear motion the definition is this object move along a straight line is called rectilinear motion the object move along a straight line very simple when one object is moving in straight line it is called rectilinear motion which are the examples when one car is moving in straight line then we can say oh when a person is walking in a straight line then that motion is rectilinear motion so that's the 
rectilinear motion and in your textbook you can see some examples for that. Very similar. Now the next type of motion that is the car just moved through the circular path now. That is that is in circular track and we are calling that motion called circular motion. Circular motion. You already know the concept. That means the object is moving in circular track or circular path is what? Circular motion. And the definition is this. When an object when an object is in circular path with respect with respect to a fixed axis is called circular motion when an object is in circular path there okay you can see with respect to a fixed axis or fixed point. This axis means simply point. And what is that? I will show you what it is. You can see one bob. Bob means ball and I just put one string. Now you can see I am just rotating this. And what is the motion of this ball? The motion of this ball is in circular motion. And how it is rotating? It is rotating with one fixed axis. That you can see. This is rotating and my hand is always there in a fixed point. And also one thing is the, the length of the thread is always same. That is the thing here we are mentioned in the definition that with respect to a fixed axis or fixed point. Here my hand is the fixed point. For all the circular motion it have a particular fixed point. That means in the circular motion, here my hand is the fixed point. And in all other motions, for example, you can see the rotation of the fan leaf. This fan leaf is rotating with a fixed point and that is at the center you can see. The motor situated. Now, that is the fixed point. And the another rotation that the circular motion of our cloak need that is rotating with the fixed point this so these are some of the examples for the circular motion the circular motion of a ball which is tied on a string the circular motion of the fan leaf circular motion of the cloak needle etc are examples of circular motion this is that and now I will show you another case and please want to observe what I am doing. The thing is very simple. Again I am taking this ball and in physics we are calling it as bow. B-O-B. Bow. And one string is the, I am just putting this and just observe what I am doing. And just giving a force on this. And it is what it is doing. It is moving front, back, front, back. And what is this motion? This is the to and fro motion. The motion is here happens is to and fro motion. And is it a circular motion? No, it is not circular. If it is completely rotating, we can say it as circular motion. And here what happens? It is only front, back, front, back, front, back. Then what is this? Actually here the movement of the bob is getting repeated. Here the movement of the bob is repeated. And we can call this motion periodic motion. Periodic motion. What is this periodic motion? Periodic motion is the motion which the object repeats its motion with regular interval of time. Object repeats its motion in 
regular interval of time. Object repeats its motion in regular interval of time. Actually, this is a simple model of pendulum. What is this pendulum? You can see this pendulum in the clock and all. It will move such a motion and you will study this in detail in your 7th standard. Now, just remember this periodic motion's example is the motion of pendulum and this is actually simple pendulum. And another example is the child is moving in one string. And what are the another examples? Another example is in our guitar we can see the number of strings are there. When we are giving force on this what happens? It starts to vibrate. And this is also a type of periodic motion. That means the string is getting vibrated. And that is one example for periodic motion. And also you can see in your textbook number of images are there. And that is also the example for periodic motion. So today's class we discussed about different types of motion. These are these different types of motion. One is rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. The next one is this circular motion. Circular motion. And finally we discussed about periodic motion. Periodic motion. So these are the three types of motion we discussed. And now you want to do one thing that find number of examples for this. For this rectilinear, you just want to find five examples within this. Then one to five, five examples for this circular motion. And also want to find five examples for this periodic motion. So this is the work for today. And actually we completed our chapter. Very simple chapter, small chapter. You just want to read your textbook and you want to focus in your notebook for studying this. And also want to study in this chapter basically to conversion of the centimeter to meter like this. So it's enough for today. You just want to read your textbook and complete your notes. And we will meet in the next class with next chapter.